I would like to welcome you back to No Hippie Barbecue and Cooking. I appreciate you guys stopping by. It's been a lot harder for me to get these videos done, seeing as how I've been out on the road for about a month at a time. And sometimes when I come back, it's just hard to get a video done. But one thing I was thinking about on my way home was an easy recipe to do a video on. And I saw a Salisbury steak recipe on a website called realhousemoms.com. I'm going to leave a link to uh, this actual recipe in the description below as well as the recipe. Now I'm going to be changing this recipe up just a little bit, but the essence of it is still going to be the same. Now the way I'm going to change this recipe is I'm going to be adding just a little bit more ground beef, so I'm going to be making a few more portions, so I'm going to have a little bit more of everything. And their recipe, uh, one of our, as a matter of fact, you know what, let's hit these ingredients and I'll kind of tell you what I changed. So first thing we have is some ground beef. And I happened to be able to find some prime uh, USDA uh, ground beef. They're suggesting 80-20, which I believe this is going to be somewhere in that same area. We have some panko breadcrumbs, uh, Worcestershire sauce. Now I'm going to be using uh, Worcestershire sauce for the, for the sauce or the gravy and the uh, Salisbury steak as well. Instead of using regular pepper, I used a five blend pepper and salt instead of using uh, just regular kosher salt I'm using uh, it's called a gray sea salt some good stuff like I said again we have the Worcestershire for the gravy instead of using ketchup like they used in their recipe I'm using uh, barbecue sauce we have some flour for that gravy as well uh, for our Salisbury steak we have some minced onions and uh, some beef broth and we're also going to be using some uh, sliced onions for our sauce as well. And we're going to incorporate some olive oil. Typically I use a more high temperature oil for, for this kind of cooking, but uh, I'm kind of following their lead on that, so we'll see how that works. Anyway, what I'm going to do is clear my table off a little bit, and we'll get working on this Salisbury steak. So for some of you guys that aren't familiar with Salisbury steak, it's very similar to like a meatloaf. A bit less ingredients you're usually not going to find like a celery or green peppers in it a lot of times those vegetables will be cooked down you might add eggs things like that to it and it's usually made for a larger group of people sliced into individual uh, portions where this is going to be made into uh, individual portions right off the bat so really all that we need to do to knock out this Salisbury steak is add our ingredients so like I mentioned before we're going to add our panko breadcrumbs and this is a recipe, I, you know, like I said, I will have the recipe in the description below, but this is one of those things you can just kind of throw together. Really don't need to be too exact on the ingredients. We have our Worcestershire sauce, our five, uh, five course pepper blend, our gray sea salt, and our minced onions. Now since we aren't cooking these uh, onions down, I did mince them quite a bit. And now that I'm looking at this, I think a nice ingredient to this recipe might be some minced garlic, but I'm gonna be following their recipe. So we're gonna keep it simple, which is another thing I like about this. So let's get mixing it in. Now I've kind of got out of the routine of cooking, you know, being a truck driver, I'm out like a month at a time, really not a lot of time and space to be cooking. There's a few people out there that can do it, but. I'm just not one of those guys. I need my space. So it is good when I can get back home and get cooking again. I'm going to finish getting this all mixed in and we'll pick it up when we're making these patties. So we have everything incorporated into this meat. Now it's time for us to form the patties. Now my wife took this coronavirus thing pretty serious. So I don't have any more of my black gloves. So we're going to get old school on this like we're playing with some Play-Doh. Form these in whatever sizes and shapes that you'd like. I'm just going to kind of go with a kind of a little football shape here. And you want to make sure it's mixed in well because you don't want it to crack as it's cooking. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to be able to get about nine out of this, but I'm going to stop it 
these six right here and I'll cook these later on. All right, there we go. I'm gonna get our skillet and we'll get these things cooked. All right, let's get cooking. Now I have my skillet on about a medium, medium heat right now. I'm gonna wait for this olive oil to start sizzling and then we'll get them in. So we're starting to get a little bit of smoke action. Let's get them in. And I'm gonna cook these until they start kind of developing a little bit of a crust on the bottom of them. And looks like I'll probably be able to get four in. You know what, let me scoot these around. Let's see if I can get off six in. Well, that's a tight fit. We're gonna work with it though. So these have cooked long enough for them to get a nice browning on the bottom of them. We're gonna just flip them over. Do the same thing on this side. And that should be about three minutes, I'd say. So now that we've let those go for another three and a half minutes or so, we're gonna set them off to the side. These do not need to be fully cooked at this point. They are gonna get cooked in the gravy we are about to make. All right, first tip with this gravy. Now I like a lot of onions, so we're rolling with a bit more than what is in the original recipe. We're gonna throw our onions in, turn our skillet down to almost like a medium low or low. And we're gonna cook these onions very slowly until they start to caramelize. As we got these onions caramelized down real good, what we're going to do now is add our flour and we're going to stir that in. Now earlier in the video what I mentioned was that we were going to add a little bit more olive oil, but in that prime beef that I bought there was enough fat that came out of that to where I didn't need to add any more uh, oil to it, so we are good to go. So we got our flour in, I'm going to add our ketchup or excuse me, our barbecue sauce, which I substituted for the ketchup, our Worcestershire sauce, and we're gonna add our beef broth. Now I'm gonna eyeball this beef broth, and if I need to add a little bit more to thicken it up, we'll do that, but what we're looking for is just a nice gravy type consistency on this. And it should thicken a little bit more as I cook, and I'll add more as needed. But uh, we're going to let this go for about three minutes. If I need to add more, we'll add more. If not, once it gets to my thickness, we're going to add our Salisbury steaks back in. And then we're going to go ahead and cook them. So I'll see you back when this thickens up. We've got our gravy all thickened up. And i got to say that looks nice right there. We're going to add our Salisbury steak back in. We're going to let this simmer for probably a good two minutes aside, so we are gonna flip it at some point. I'm not gonna film that, I'm not sure there's a reason to do that, but before I flip it, I am gonna throw some of this gravy on top of it, just so we can kind of start creeping in there like that, you know what I'm saying? So, I will see you back when the finished product is done and we'll taste it and kind of see what's going on with it. All right guys, so this is a wrap. What I did was made a little bit of mashed potatoes. Got those out on a little plate for some presentation. And what we're gonna do, throw our Salisbury steak on top. Make sure we get some onions on there. And then we're gonna add a little bit of gravy. I think three is gonna work fine for the presentation. Hit it with just a little bit of gravy. Now it's gonna be a time to take a picture, see what's up, see what we think. So it's time to see what's up with this Salisbury steak recipe. Listen, this was so simple and easy, it can't go wrong, to be honest with you. So let's get in and see what I think about it. Very delicious.
and you can't get much easier than that. Listen. I'm going to thank you guys for stopping my new hippie barbecue. I appreciate it. I got one more little hippie recipe I'm going to do before I leave out of here and hit the road again. We're going to be doing some kind of a brie situation. So it's definitely going to be on the hippie side. Be on the lookout for that. But I do want to thank you guys for stopping by No Hippie Barbecue. Comment, subscribe, and I'm out.